Hello and good evening and welcome. I'm Karima Brown and you're watching Political Exchange where we unpack Africa's political economy. Kenya, East Africa's largest economy, is gearing up for the much anticipated elections next year. In the run-up to the event, there have been concerns about violence and the potential risk it poses for the overall stability of that country. Among those who've been taking the pulse of Kenyans is Gallup, who have conducted a poll on attitudes toward the upcoming election, the judicial system and security institutions. To unpack the findings, I'm joined from our Nairobi studios by Gallup's Regional Research Director for Sub-Saharan Africa, Robert Tutora. Mr. Tutora, thank you so much for joining us. Um, what I found most interesting about the survey is that you didn't conduct it on the telephone, you did face-to-face -face surveys. Um, let's start off by talking to me about why that was important for you. Sure. Uh, the the, the uh, thing that we worry about when doing a telephone survey is that we co cover enough of the population. That means that uh, a, a large enough percentage of the population can be included in the survey. And we know from our survey that uh, about 20 percent of registered voters uh, do not have a telephone. And we know that because we conducted the survey face to face. Mm -hmm. And so automatically anybody doing a telephone survey misses 20 percent of the voting population and and more importantly those the, the characteristics of people that have a that don't have a mobile phone are different from the characteristics of people that do for example people that that people that don't have a mobile phone are in a younger age group 18 to 21 in an older age group 46 and older and if you look at mobile phone ownership by education uh, individuals that have eight or less years of education uh, have significantly fewer 65 percent mobile phones compared to people with nine or more years that have 83 percent of that population has mobile phones. So, so, so we say it's important to do face-to-face -face surveys. Absolutely, and I suppose it um, adds to the credibility of the information that you actually conduct because you can also in that interface actually see the reaction of the respondents to the questions, something that you cannot do when you're talking to them via telephone. That's right. Our interviewer, we train our interviewers and, and you know, they can often, often judge just by the reaction of the person. Did the person understand the question? Uh, and, and if they needed to, they would re-ask the question. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Mr. Tutora, take me through, um, you know, the reasons behind this survey. We know that in 2008, um, the election uh, results set off, um, you know, very ugly violence, um, uh, tearing Kenyan society apart. And subsequent to that, there's, of course, been a series of steps um, toward ensuring that the history doesn't repeat itself next year when the elections are being held. What was the compelling reason and for Gallup to conduct the survey at this time? Okay, well, first of all, th this survey, uh, we have a client. The client is the East Africa Index, and they approached us, and, and uh, both, both of us are, are concerned about uh, information getting out to civil society, to business, and to government about uh, any potential uh, security issues uh, in the upcoming election. So we felt it was really important to get out in the field and conduct these interviews and, and bring the information back, back mm -hmm. to all of society in Kenya. Now, when one looks at the, um, the findings, you looked at see several categories. Of course, you looked at well-being, which includes life evaluation and hope, safety and security, the various institutions. Let me break it down. Let's start with issues around safety and security, given that it is such a big driver of, of, of concern. Um, your findings says 23% of the people surveyed expect a repeat of post-election violence after next year's presidential election. What were the main reasons why people um, that percentage of people were so convinced that violence will in fact break out? Yeah, unfortunately we didn't go into those issues in this, in this survey. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly long survey with, a, with many topics and so we have to pick and choose which topics we go in depth in. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if one looks at the fact that 73% of the, uh, you know, people say the local police force in their community can ensure people's safety during the uh, presidential election, would it be fair, Mr. Tutoro, to say that perceptions about violence are, are exaggerated given the fact that such a high percentage does actually express some confidence in law enforcement agencies, particularly in localities? 
I, I, don't, I don't think necessarily that's the case. Uh, it, it's almost uh, very ba balanced in the sense that 72 percent believe police can enforce it and 23% uh, are concerned about, about violence. So, uh, I, you know, at least, at least on face, face validity, I, I think that's a fairly reasonable uh, split. Mm -hmm. Now, you of course also looked at the judicial system and your finding is very interesting. It says 69% say that the judicial system will be more autonomous. Now, we of course know that the, uh, the country is undergoing um, a, a process where organizations such as um, your courts and so on need to become more independent from the executive. Is this a, a good sign? What can one read into this figure? Well, I think, it, I think the, the important uh, uh, thing there is the relationship between the uh, new constitution, which was really important uh, for Kenya and Kenyans uh, to be put in place, and that, that Kenyans believe that that constitution uh, will help the autonomy of the courts. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, to me that means, you know, fair trials uh, and no interference, particularly no interference. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about trials, of course, the issue that's uppermost in many people's mind is, of course, the International Criminal Court. We know that um, there are several candidates in the uh, Kenyan elections that have, um, in fact, been charged uh, for their role or alleged role in the violence in 2008. And it says here 93% have heard of the ICC, of which 69% approve of the using of the courts to investigate those allegedly responsible for violence. So a very high degree of confidence in the fact that the courts can actually act independent of, of, of political masters. Yes, it, and, and it's, it's the results on the uh, opinions of Kenyans on the ICC, I think, are, are, are very, in, very interesting. Uh, uh, if you look, look over all the data, it, 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 it appears that Kenyans are very positive about the ICC. Uh, you know, the, of the people that uh, have heard of the ICC, uh, a large number, a large percentage, I believe it was 65 percent, believe that, that, the, that the, the alleged suspects would get a fair trial outside of Kenya. And then if you ask that group uh, that said, yes, the trial would be fair outside of Kenya, 91 percent of those Kenyans said that the, tri the, fair, the, fair, the fairest trial would be held at The Hague. Mm -hmm. And we, we, of course, we offered them the options of The Hague, Arusha, or elsewhere. In, uh, in Africa. And so, so that's, a, that's a very strong majority saying the trial would be fairer at The Hague. Why do you think that is? Um, were there um, reasons that uh, were forwarded or did you give people options in the questions uh, when you um, uh, asked them to choose between whether people should be tried you know, in Arusha or, or outside of, of Kenya or outside of the continent for that matter? Uh, no, we didn't at this time. But remember, this is this is the first of a series of four surveys, and uh, although the topics will change over time, uh, we expect that probably in in, in the, the third or the fourth survey we'll go more in depth into the ICC issue. Mm -hmm. When I spoke with um, uh, Kenyan investors and risk uh, uh, managers a while ago, they were pointing to the fact that the ICC and the, the role that the institution is playing in terms of keeping uh, people to account for their role in the violence has been one of the most positive things that have happened and has acted as a break, if it were, as it were, to potential violence. Um, do you think that your findings uh, back that claim and that perception up? Yeah, I, I really think I do. I, uh, they do. The 65 percent of Kenyans that have heard of the ICC think that the alleged, alleged suspects will get a fair trial outside of Kenya. Uh, 91 percent have heard of the ICC and, and uh, think that the alleged suspects will get uh, uh, the fairest trial at The Hague. So I, I, just, I just believe that, that Kenyans are looking at this as a very important institution uh, that, that will in fact uh, uh, ensure a better election in 2013. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the instruments on the election. Of course there's the question of voters' roles. What did the survey find there? Are we seeing that the voters' role is credible? The people that are registered, are people confident that those um, you know, processes are fair and that they're transparent? What is the survey finding? 
Right. So what we know right now is that 74 percent of the of the people 18 and older, the eligible voters, right now say that they uh, uh, that they are registered to vote. And when you go one step further and say, uh, do you do you in, intend to vote in the pr presidential election? 95 percent of Kenyans 18 and older say they uh, intend to. Uh, vote, but it seems like there may be a, an issue on the horizon in actually getting people to the polls, because uh, the uh, IEBC, the Independent Electoral and Boundary Commission, which really has overall responsibility uh, for the uh, for the election, uh, is requiring that Kenyans have a new I, new ID card and a new voter card. And when we asked Kenyans. Uh, about the issue of voter cards, only 25 percent uh, of, Ken of Kenyans 18 and older said they have a, have a voter card. So there may be some issue with uh, a large number of Kenyans being uh, disenfranchised in this election. And I think that one of the key, key issues is going to be, or one of the key players is going to be the IEBC. Uh, and, and working on that issue. Mm -hmm. Now, what I wanted to ask, uh, I wanted to zone into this issue of potential disenfranchising of, 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 of you know, voters. Um, obviously, that is a critical issue. If people believe that they've been deliberately uh, disallowed from participating in the process, obviously the risk um, and the potential for violence increases. Uh, when we started this conversation, you were saying that um, this information needs to go out you know, to various role players, including government, business, civil society. Um, have you taken the findings of the survey, Mr. Tutora, to um, the Electoral Institute? Are they aware of some of the potential problems that they might well run into? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a great question. We haven't had individual meetings with any of the, the, uh, the key players in, in this situation. We just fin we finished the, the survey and made the presentation, the overall presentation today. So uh, that may be steps that happen in the future. We'll just have to see. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the question of, um, you know, the age groups of, of voters is an important issue. Of course, uh, a, a lot of Kenyans are young people. They've been the ones that have been bearing the, br the brunt of some of the social problems in the country, including unemployment. Um, what was the ages of the people that you surveyed and what proportion of, of those surveyed are in fact young people? People. Yes, so it, about six, a little over 16 percent of the sample uh, was uh, people 18 to 21. Uh, and uh, with, interestingly, when we asked about voter registration, that was the group that had the smallest percentage of registered voters. So th that, that 18 to 21-year-old uh, group, only 39 percent of those, re of those uh, uh, individuals uh, were registered. When you compare that to older groups, you're talking about, you know, in the 70s and 80 percent uh, of those groups being being registered. So obviously, that's going to be a uh, that that's going to be a big issue. We we Kenya Kenya probably doesn't want to go into this next election with that particularly important group disenfranchised. Mr. Tutora, we have to take a short break, but when we return, we will continue our discussion unpacking the Gallup poll on Kenya's upcoming elections.